Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you haven't already, hit that like, subscribe, and join the tribe. I am Mia, and this is my channel, Living Blissfully. This episode is going to be all about human design. I'm going to go over the overview of the chart, briefly what everything means. Uh, maybe we'll go into some of the details on a chart, but it would take eight to 10 hours to seriously dissect a chart from everything that I've learned. I'm not a professional. <laughs> I am actually reading my own chart and reading some of my friends' charts around me and doing a lot of studying and research. I've probably already done like six hours of listening to podcasts and research and I'll post all those links down below. But if you are interested in how to read a human design chart and where you might start looking and how to read it, then keep on watching. Wake up and live my dream. Someday soon I'm gonna make it. Yeah. All hard work's gonna be worth it. chart so this is actually one of my friends charts and my friend has been curious what their chart means so I figured I would go ahead and read this friend's chart I crossed out the name and I won't show any details so only this friend will know that I'm reading their chart all right and like I said, I'm not going to dissect every single detail because that would take like eight to 10 hours. So if you haven't heard of human design, human design is based off of your birthday, the date, the time, your birth name, and where you were born. So state, city, country, and yeah. And then the time has to be specific because even if you're a few minutes off, it could completely change your chart. It's based off of where the planets were aligned when you were in the womb and when you were born. You develop subconscious traits three months before you're born and then your conscious, conscious traits, which are your personality, um, when you are born. So that's in a nutshell how it goes. Um, it's crazy because it's been exactly spot on for me. Um, it even said in my chart when I'm vibrating at my lowest that I would most likely develop some kind of body issue, eating disorder, or some bad body image that would affect my life. And boy, has that been the truth because I have HA. <laughs> um, and what I've learned is that my purpose on this earth is to have the best self-love and to spread that self-love to others. And so that's something that I'm working on. And thanks to human design, I actually know how to control my emotions and my feelings. I know how to control um, when things don't feel right. And I also know that I'm supposed to be living by the moment and controlled by an emotional authority. And so I'm trying to live by my strategy and authority and my strategy is to respond and to wait for the response. So basically when my body is like, yes, this is what you need to be doing. That's to me responding in the moment, living in the now and not living in the future, which is what I tend to do. So let's get right into this. If you don't have a human design chart like this, you can go to mybodygraph.com. This is one of my friends that I'll be using as an example of guiding you through the chart. Now the shapes that you see on the chart, it doesn't matter what color they are. What matters is whether they're colored or white. If they are colored, that means that those are the energy centers that are defined and the ones that are white will be energy centers that are undefined or open. Starting from the bottom, the bottom square, which is undefined on this person's chart, is the root center. The next one up, which is defined in red, that is the sacral center. To the left, which is undefined, is the spleen center. And if we go back to the sacral center to the right, which is defined in the brown triangle, is the solar plexus center. Right above the solar plexus center, which is undefined on this chart, is the heart center. And then diagonal up from the heart center is the G center. Above the G center is the throat center, which is defined in the brown square. 
Above the throat center is the anja center, that's the mind center. And then the last triangle at the top is the head center, and this is where you receive pressure for inspiration. Each of the energy centers processes energy in a different way. The different shapes, which are circle, square, triangle, those represent all the energy centers, and they're receiving and transmitting energy. They can also be giving off energy to others to be receiving around you. They may have those areas defined or undefined. Whether it's defined or undefined comes from your gates, and those are the numbers that are inside each of the energy centers. And then if you look on the left, you'll see the design column. So this is what is generated three months before birth while you're in the womb. And then on the right side, you'll see the personality traits. And those are the traits you're born with. And you're usually conscious of those in your lifetime versus in your design. Those are your subconscious traits that you will typically learn in a lifetime, um, usually if you're aware of them. Your subconscious traits will be reflected in red and your conscious traits, your personality will be reflected in black. So if you see those black and red lines that are coming from your gates, which are the numbers inside the shapes to another one, that is called a channel. If they completely connect from one gate to another, that is your more powerful channel. And some lines may also be black and red that means that's a mixture of conscious and subconscious traits now some may not be coming all the way to another number which means those are not complete channels the two columns on the side both your design and personality are illuminated by different planets the sun the earth the moon all the planets and the first number that you see, don't mind the decimal because that will be more in depth and that'll be a more in depth later video. That means um, that's the gate that's illuminated for you. And in your body graph, you'll see one of your centers illuminated with that gate there. Your personality is qualities and gifts and traits that you will feel and know that you exhibit. Those are the ones that are in black. Your design will have the red subconscious gifts and qualities and traits that you may not be aware that you have these. And that's what human design will make you aware of is those subconscious traits. On a chart, if you see full lines connecting channels, that means that they're connecting from one energy center to another. That means that you have those two gates illuminated by planets in your chart, and that energy is flowing from one energy center to another. For example, the solar plexus gate 36, if that's illuminated, and throat center gate 35 is illuminated, that means that their solar plexus and throat are both colored in. When they connect from one area to another, you'll know that the area where you are really powerful. If your solar plexus is defined through this channel, then you can say, I'm really powerful with my emotions and give off this emotional wave. If you are defining your throat, then you have a very powerful voice, powerful communication, and ability to manifest. By lines, you can see where your power stands. The gates create your type, and there are 64 gates. The illuminated gates, which are the numbers that are in white, and they're in kind of a shaded in circle shape. The illuminated gates are supposed to be the things that you do in this lifetime. It comes naturally. It's a job to lean into these gates. The gates in your chart that are just white, you're not supposed to be those things all the time. You may have those traits when you're around another person and they have those things to find. And together, you share in that energetic quality. Knowing what gates you can have that you vibrate at high and low vibration can alter a lot of the things around you and your mindset and you can make those little shifts when you're more aware of what these gates are and you can start putting them into practice making your life a little bit more 
happier, a little bit more ease and understanding that sometimes the people around you might have those traits that complement you, but when they're not near you, it's making sure that you're in alignment with your traits. That's why it's important to live your strategy and authority now and every day. Now we're going to go into what the arrows mean here at the top. So if they are pointing left, then they are a more masculine energy, which represents more powerful. And on the right, it's a more feminine energy, which is more magical. And if they are on the left-hand side, they are more related to your design And if they're on the right-hand side, they're more related to your personality and your conscious. So I'm going to go by and let you know whether the arrow points left and right, what that means. Um, So the top left arrow represents your digestion, and that includes food and how you digest info, that kind of thing. If it points left, then you are actively digesting life. You crave structure and consistency. You like to learn facts and take in what's told to you. You have a great memory. Patterns and structure support living your best life. But if it points right, you're more passively digesting life. You despise structure and you crave variety. You don't have as good of a memory, but when you're asked a question, you can answer a question with answers you didn't even really know you had. Your mind is designed to absorb all information in a situation, and it may you may not be able to recall exact details, but you can share deeper insight on the situations. The bottom left arrow represents your environment. So if your arrow points left, then you are here to be observed. And you like a structured environment, you're, you like a habitat that supports being active and being an active participant, you, get to, you like to work in and improve in it, and you like to find places you would enjoy, and then you like to revisit those places. But if your arrow points right, then you are a, an observer of the environment. So you thrive on creativity and inspiration of the environment you like moving to different locations based off of your intuition which is helpful you like the ability to travel on a whim via intuition Um, you find it freeing and supportive of your creativity and your work and you like being able to observe a variety of environments and what feels good to you and you learn from seeing different environments Um, The top right arrow represents awareness. If it points left, you are a more strategic person. So you like to, you can recall info easily. You are aware of facts and you do well with numbers. You see patterns, you understand logic, you like statistics, you think factually. And if you get lost in things that are taught vaguely, um, it vibrates at your lowest and you feel frustrated or you feel you're not self-theme. Our schools are more designed for a strategic thinker. However, if your arrow points right, you're more of a receptive um, person and you can see creativity and you take in more than just facts. You think in artwork, imagination, and fantasy. You don't care about numbers or statistics. You care about the beauty behind the meaning and the conversation. You don't like to recall specific facts and you can explain things but not recall specifics well. And then the last arrows are the bottom right arrow and that's your perspective. If it points left, you have an active perspective. You typically design it. You like structure your idea perspective and you build it you create perspective and decide what you want Um, your specific manifestors you thrive on choosing what you want down to the last detail you creatively choose what you want you create it and you request what you want and then you pursue it you thrive on lists visualization vision boards you like seeing exactly what you want before receiving it and that's what builds the excitement and you have more gratitude when that's fulfilled 
you have a high vibration when you do have that gratitude fulfilled and you say no to things that aren't what they what you want if your arrow points right you have a more passive perspective and you need to see or experience the desire in full detail before knowing exactly what you want. You need a few general rules and you can allow the universe or the masculine energy to support you in those needs. You do well with core desired feelings in general, like general affirmations and mood boards with things like adventure, abundance, luxury, and comfort. You like to be surprised with something that you didn't know you even wanted, but is perfect. And that allows you the most gratitude and support and joy. And that helps you vibrate at your highest. You don't need to be specific to know what you desire. You just want to know that it's on the way. And having to choose what's more restrictive feels like a chore to you. One more thing that I want to read on this chart is how to read your channels. So we're going to look at this personality channel, which is this black channel that goes from the throat center, gate 20, to the sacral center, gate 34. So gate 20 is the gate of the now, and that's the energy of contemplation and recognition of what deeds should be brought into form. And that connects down to gate 34, which is the gate of power. It is the busiest, most capable energy in the chart. This is a design of the multitasker. It carries an enormous amount of power, but only in response. When the 34 is not busy, they are in agony. Now I'm going to go into the other areas that will show up when you go to mybodygraph.com and look up your own. You'll see the body graph on one side and below you'll see information. If you click information, you'll see this chart. So we're going to delve into each portions of this chart so that you understand how to navigate it. So the first part that'll show up is the birth data that you enter. That's your birth date, time, place. And then it'll also show your design time. So that's three months before you were born. And then the next part is your type. And there are five different types. I will mention those later to you in person. <laughs> and then the next one is your strategy. Strategy is connected to your type. So, for example, if you are a projector, yours would be to wait for the invitation. For us generators, it's to respond. And that's to go off of that feeling of when to respond. The next part is your not self theme. So this is when you're out of alignment and you're not connected to your energy type. That feeling when you get that you're just feeling off. And for a projector, it might be bitterness, but for a generator, we feel frustrated. And for a manifester, you'll feel anger. So in those moments where I feel not myself, I typically feel frustrated, like this chart that we're reading. This will be a sign that you're just not yourself. So when you feel you're not self-theme, it's a sign to go back to your design and live by your design. That means to go back to your strategy and authority. Your signature is what you will feel when you are in alignment and when you are feeling yourself. So for example, for a generator or a manifesting generator, you will feel satisfaction. Your definition is how your energy is connecting throughout your chart. It's how you process information, how you take in conditioning from other people, how you find fulfillment when you're connecting with other people. So if you're a single definition, you don't feel like you need to rely on other people or feel like someone else might complete you. You feel self-sufficient and connected and solid within your own energy. You process information really quickly because you're not relying on other people through your centers. There is single definition, split definition, triple split definition, quadruple split definition, and if you are a reflector, you have no definition. 
Your authority is how you make decisions. So for some examples, such as the one that we are reading, you can have an emotional authority, which comes from your solar plexus. You can have a gut authority, which comes from your sacral. If you have an emotional authority, this is like giving yourself time for decisions. Your gut is more of a yes or no in the moment. And if you have splenic authority, that's more like trust and intuition. So it'll come to you intuitively. And geocenter authority is more like you have to talk it out, hear your own voice to understand what you're thinking and feeling. Your profile, you'll have two numbers. This is your personality type. The first number is your conscious side of your personality that you would be aware of. The second number is your subconscious personality side that other people would really see in you that you may not see in yourself. When you add the two together, it gives you a personality archetype. There are 12 different archetypes. Every single human is one of the 12. So the number you are seeing is your specific profile. Based off of jovianarchive.com, the one for investigating opportunists, the first line is the investigator, and that's making sure that the foundation is solid. And then the unconscious fourth line is waiting for the right opportunity to externalize their foundation. So they can be of influence and impact other people that are within their network. I'm personally a 2-4, and a lot of the people around me that I've looked at their charts are 2-4s. Twos like to have their own time. They almost need that time to themselves. And four is that others see them as people, people persons and people that they can come to that don't need their own time. So sometimes the two numbers can contradict each other. The next thing is the incarnation cross. This is the most powerful. It's the combination of your four main gates. It's your life purpose. It's complex. It's very specific. And there is many of them. I'm talking hundreds of them. This specific incarnation cross is the right angle cross of consciousness. And it is attached to those four numbers specifically. And this cross reads on the link that I give you down below as you are here to be in the flow of life. All of life is made up of patterns that dance in the river of time. Your energy is the basis of these patterns. You have an inherent gift to understand that it is all about the pattern in life, in nature, and in the universe. If we go with the flow, then our energy is reserved for experiencing the things that move in and out of our lives and is not spent trying to fight the current. You are here to be wise about this and share your enlightenment with others. I really like the incarnation crosses it provides a lot of clarity in my opinion the last thing about the chart overview that we're going to go over is these self not self keynotes under the information tab they'll be at the bottom of the information but for this specific chart that we're reading um, some things they might feel from different energy sections especially sections that are not defined so these are sections that aren't defined on this person's chart they might feel these things when they're in their not self so they might be feeling from their heart that it's they're feeling unworthy or undervalued. They might feel like they're holding on to what isn't good for them. They might be fixated on finding love and direction, and they might always be in a hurry to be free of pressure. So those are just some nice keynotes to let you know when you might be in your not self. And I like these keynotes because they truly do come from those undefined areas. And I'm going to talk a little bit about um, my undefined throat and how that affects me in certain situations. It's nice having some of that knowledge to understand um, your undefined and open areas. So that might sound kind of confusing, but like I said, this is a very complex, confusing thing at first until you start learning and listening to podcasts and reading about it. And I've like read about it on websites. I have watched YouTube episodes. But I've learned a lot of my information from the De Luna podcast. So if you guys get into human design as much as I am, 
I recommend just like on your drives to work or to the store or whatever, listen to the Day Luna podcast because you will pick up so many little nuggets that'll help to get you started. Um, there's still a lot of things that I haven't learned. So I've actually decided that I'm going to get a chart reading from Day Luna. Um, and that way I can kind of understand because I've heard that it'll even tell you like the good foods to eat based off of your human design chart. And I have not learned how to read that yet. So there's still a lot, lot to learn, even though I've gotten a pretty good like overview of it, which is what I'm going to try and show you guys. And then there's going to be types. So there are five different types. There is a generator and manifesting generator, and those are 75% of the population. And then there is manifestors, which are 8% of the population. There's projectors, which are 20% of the population. And then there are reflectors, which are 2% of the population. And I have yet to find a reflector. So let me know down below what energy type you are. Cause I'm super curious if I've got a reflector hanging out out there. Um, I am a generator. The person that we are looking into their chart is a manifesting generator. I have a friend who's a projector. Um, the girl's podcast who I actually learned about human design from, she started talking about it on her Instagram channel and she brought somebody on to talk about it on her podcast. And then she actually had her chart read on her podcast and that's I am Meg Dahl and you can follow her on Instagram or you can hit up her podcast, which is the unbreakable you and she's a manifester. Um, so it's kind of cool because I've got to like kind of get to know some different types, but primarily a lot of the people that I have gotten charts for are manifesting generators. And then one other person has been a peer generator, which there are 30% of the generators that are peer generators. The rest of them are manifesting generators. So that was kind of cool to learn. So yeah, my incarnation cross was all about that, like superior self love, the ultimate love and projecting that on to everyone that I come into contact with. So I'm definitely working more on the self love aspect because I think once I truly have self love, which I have never really had, um, then maybe it'll kind of be different in the environment around me. So that'll be really cool. And mine are significantly different. So that's, that's, what's cool is seeing how like your coworkers or your family or your friends or your significant others are compared to you. It shows why maybe you might have like communication differences. So it's really fun to learn about yourself and everyone around you. Um, because then you know how to communicate better. And that's the end of the notes that I have. But basically, I just kind of wanted to take you through um, what the chart looks like. Um, there's so much more to dissect because I will also post the links of where I find my gates. And um, just know that some of these websites, they, they're websites. So they could be less detailed or um, like I've heard on a podcast, sometimes when you look things up on the internet, they can focus more on the negative side of things rather than focusing on the positive and when you're high vibrating. Um, so far, my gates have real good clarity. Um, so I'll post where I've been reading my gates, where I found my incarnation cross, all those things. I'll post those links down below this video so that you can also do your own research and, ch and chart reading. Um, but I recommend getting your chart read. Like I said, I'm going to get my chart read and I've really dissected my charts. Um, but I think it's really cool when you get to know your gates. So I always think it's really cool when you actually start looking at your defined gates, when you start looking at those channels where the red connects from one gate to another and you're connect connecting those energy centers. Um, and then when you get that like carnation cross um, definition, it just, I feel like provides more um, definition into like who you are. And some of those things you may have been through going through your whole life and you might have been shaming yourself. Like I almost felt like, why am I so emotional? Like I don't feel like I try to be emotional, but it just happens and it's almost frustrating. But now that I've learned about human design, I know that me being emotional is who I am. It's my design. And I also know that I'm going to go through this wave of emotion because you have a defined wave. And so there's going to be times where whether I want it to be down or not, it's designed to go down. And I just have to remember in that moment to be grateful that I'm feeling emotions, that I have that capability to feel those emotions and to just 
try and spend that time in my down, um, thinking of more gratefulness and positivity. And so it's definitely made me reflect a lot more. Um, I also, um, because I am defined in certain areas and undefined in other areas, um, like if you're undefined in your throat, which I am, um, this person is defined, but if you're undefined in your throat, you may find yourself in quiet situations where you feel like you need to talk or um, you feel like you might not be noticed in the room unless you say something or talk. And so that's why you might be found as someone who talks a lot. And um, that's because our throat is undefined. So technically, in those situations, we should actually take the time to think like, is this a time where I should say something? Or is this just my undefined throat center telling me that I should say something? So I have been taking a lot of time to reflect on that because I am definitely one of those people who talks a lot in situations. And I've actually been telling people around me like, sorry, the reason that I talk a lot is because I'm, I have an undefined throat center. And I said, this is why, because my body thinks that I need to talk in order to be recognized or noticed. Um, and sometimes my body or whatever tells me that I, I need to say something right now because it's quiet. And um, really, it's just moments where I need to reflect and think a little bit more. So I thought that was kind of cool. I've been really focusing on those things and trying to change those things. And there is times where I find myself wanting to say something and then I'm like, why? But why are you saying something right now? And so I don't know. I feel like human design is really cool. Um, I There's some people that I talked about human design with that I thought were not going to be very like open to it. But when I started telling them like, sorry, the reason I'm doing this or being off or this or that is because I'm really taking time to reflect and I'm not making decisions right in the second. Um, I'm taking time to think about my decisions um, or this is something that I really feel like it's very strong for me. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. And when I started talking about that, they're like, well, I'm kind of curious about myself and, um, their, all their information has also been very true and very, um, like on the dot. So I don't know if anything kind of resonates with you and this feels good. Like maybe you want to research more about it, or maybe you found me through searching about human design. Um, like I said, I'm learning, you guys can tell I'm still a little shaky on things. Um, I read a lot from notes and like I said, I'm going to put all those links down below, um, cause I cannot take credit for this knowledge. I have learned through like six to eight hours of just listening to podcasts. And sometimes I listen to the podcast like three times because I'll listen while I'm driving and then I get home and I'm like, I feel like I need to note that down. I feel like that's really important for me not to forget. And then I'll write it down. And then basically what I did is I read these notes to you guys. And then um, some stuff is just coming naturally because of my chart, because I've gotten really familiar with my chart. I study my chart. Um, I kind of take some time to acknowledge my chart um, daily. And so those things I'm able to talk about very easily with you guys because it's something I reflect on. Um, but reading somebody else's chart like I was trying to do in this um, episode is different because they're completely, they've got different energy um, centers. And so maybe when I get done di dissecting and defining my chart, um, I can share my chart with you guys because um, that will flow a little bit more easily. And if you guys have any questions about human design, feel free to comment down below. Like I said, I'm learning, so I may not have all the answers right this second, um, but I am doing a lot of self-research and I am going to get my chart read this week. And I'm going to go get my chart read with Day Luna. And that's just simply because I really connect with their podcast and like I get this just really glowing feeling listening to their podcast. And I've been told that when you get your chart read, you want to go with someone who resonates with you. Um, and so they really resonate with me. And I feel like there's a lot I do know about my chart, but there's still a lot I don't think I know about my chart. And I think they're going to be able to provide kind of more insight. And um, once they provide more insight, I'll kind of understand the chart a little bit more. So if you guys are interested in more human design episodes, then make sure you subscribe to this channel because there's going to be a lot more content on human design. I don't want to make every episode about human design, but there is going to be more. 
So if you guys do post your questions down below, I'll do a human design question episode to try and answer all your guys' questions in a few weeks. Next week, we're going to talk about Enneagrams. I also have my first Costco. I just got a Costco membership and I am getting on to more of a whole food kind of meal plan. So um, I feel like I'm, I'm on the cusp of recovery for HA. So I'm trying to eat like I just like organic whole foods and um, the junk I feel like is like just make me feel blah. So I'm trying to eat more whole foods. I am not restricting. I am not dieting. Um, I am cutting back on dairy and meat because I feel like that's all I eat, which I hear causes inflammation, but I'm not caught. I am not cutting that out completely because I'm sorry. I love milk and I love meat. So I will still eat a lot of those things. I'm just trying to eat more kind of whole food style. So I did an episode on some kind of whole food dishes that I pre prep for the week and stuff you can make in the instant pot. Um, and also my first Costco order. So that episode will also be coming up. And then I have, um, I want to do another Starbucks episode with some new secret drinks. Um, so I have that coming up. Let me know in the comments what other episodes you guys want. Is there like a challenge video that's going around that you guys would like to see? Let me know. Um, do you guys want to see more human design? Um, do you want more information on HA or self-love and body type? Um, I also would like to do an episode on orthorexia because a lot of people haven't heard of that and I want to kind of delve and go more into it. So there will be an episode on that as well. Let me know in the comments what you guys want to see. All right, I'm done talking. You guys have a wonderful week. I'll see you next Sunday for another episode with the Enneagrams, which is another personality quiz test kind of thing. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, and join the tribe. Bye, guys. I'm a child.